You're watching InfoSec Bytes, a crash course in information security for journalists. We're based at the Centre for Investigative Journalism in London and supported by the Logan Foundation. This is a tutorial on how to use the Windows tool Veracrypt to encrypt your files and hard drives to secure your data. This video is provided for information only. It cannot replace the advice of a trained security professional. If lives or safety depend on your security, please seek the advice of an expert. The Centre for Investigative Journalism is a pioneer in providing expert information security training services to journalists and journalistic institutions. To consult with an expert through the CIJ, or to arrange a CIJ training session, contact the address on screen. The techniques demonstrated in this video will encrypt your data, making it unreadable and unrecoverable without your passphrase. If you're careless or forget your passphrase, you will be unable to decrypt your data. Your data could be lost forever. So don't use these techniques if you are unsure what you're doing. If you do choose to use them, you do so at your own risk. If you haven't already, we recommend you watch our overview video, Protecting Your Data, before you watch this tutorial, to understand everything that's going on. You can tap on the pop-up message now to access it. Recent versions of Windows include an encryption system called BitLocker. Unfortunately, however, BitLocker is only available on the more expensive editions of Windows, such as Windows 7 Enterprise or Ultimate, or Windows 10 Pro. So BitLocker isn't available to all Windows users. This tutorial instead shows how to use Veracrypt, a free software tool which is available to everyone to encrypt your Windows computer. But if you own one of these editions of Windows and want to use BitLocker instead, please see the description for a link to a guide to how to do so. Let's begin. First, we must download Veracrypt. Open a browser and type in veracrypt.codeplex.com. When the page loads, click on the Download button. You will be asked to choose the platform you want to download Veracrypt for. Choose the Installer link next to the Windows option. Presently, you will be offered a download. Accept it and save the file to your Downloads folder. And then wait while the file is downloaded. When the file is downloaded, navigate to your Downloads folder and find the Veracrypt installer. Double-click on it. Click Yes on the User Account Control Notice. Click I Agree on the License Agreement and click Next. Choose Install on this screen and click Next. And on this screen, click Install to install Veracrypt. And wait while the application installs. When the installation is finished, click OK. And then click Finish. The installer will offer you an opportunity to read the Veracrypt manual, which we recommend. In this tutorial, we're going to say no. A shortcut should appear on your desktop, which you can use to launch Veracrypt in future. Double-click it to launch Veracrypt now. The Veracrypt main window will appear. Veracrypt has a lot of options and a lot of things that you can do with it, so it follows that it has quite a busy interface and there are lots of menus and buttons to get to grips with. That's why we recommend that once you get to grips with its basic functions, you carefully explore what it can do to find a way of using it that suits your needs. We say carefully, of course, because as with any application like this, you could do serious damage to your system if you use it carelessly. Always read up on what you're doing before you go ahead and do it. And of course, read the manual, which, as you can see, can be accessed from the Help menu. But in the meantime, we're going to run through its basic functions so that you can get started. In the top pane of the main window, you can see a list of letters. These are the available drive letters that you can use to mount Veracrypt volumes. Veracrypt works by mounting encrypted drives as Windows drives, so that just like the C drive, they get a drive letter and you can access them from Windows Explorer. The first thing we're going to do is create a standard Veracrypt volume. In the bottom pane, click Create Volume. Now you will see a list of the kinds of volumes you can create. In this tutorial, we're going to run over all three of the main tasks you can perform at Veracrypt, one by one. These are encrypted file container, encrypt a non-system drive or partition, encrypt the system drive. We will begin with the first of these, so leave the encrypted file container option ticked. 
This means that the Veracrypt volume will be a big encrypted file on your hard drive, which you can hide other files inside. And then you can mount it as a drive when you want to access its contents. So we click Next here. We're going to choose Standard Veracrypt volume here, but it's worth noting that Veracrypt also offers you the option of creating a hidden volume, which you might use if you're afraid someone might force you to give up your password. However, this method relies on the concept of plausible deniability, and this is a hard thing to do. If you're interested in this option, read the manual, and also consult the description beneath this video for further reading materials. Click Next. On the Volume Location screen, choose the location and name for your file. We are going to choose the desktop, and we are going to call the volume encryptedvolume.hc. .hc is the standard file extension for Veracrypt volumes, so always end with that. Once you're done, click Save and then click Next. Veracrypt gives you several options in terms of the encryption you can use. If you're interested in these options, read up about them in the manual. For now, we are going to choose the default options, which are AES with the SHA-512 hash algorithm. Click Next. Because you're creating your volume as an encrypted file container, you can choose the size. We're going to choose 500 megabytes. Click Next. This is an important step. Choose your password. Make sure that you can remember your password, but also that it is long enough and obscure enough that it is secure. When you're finished, click Next. The mathematics of encryption involves lots of randomness. In order to ensure that the encryption is strong, Veracrypt needs lots of random information. It's actually very hard for computers to generate random information, so this screen is asking you to help the computer generate random information. By moving your mouse around in a random way on the screen, you help build up the computer's store of randomness, which it can then use to make sure your volume is properly encrypted. As you move the mouse around, you can see the bar filling up. Once it's full, you can click Format and Veracrypt will begin to create the encrypted volume. Once it's done, click OK, and then exit the wizard. As you can see, the new Veracrypt volume has appeared on your desktop. To open it, just double-click on it, and Veracrypt will launch. An alternative way of opening a Veracrypt volume is to click on the Choose File button, and then navigate to where the file is, and open it through the Selection dialog. Once you have selected a file, you then need to choose a drive letter for it to be mounted at. As you can see, the default one that is selected is the A drive, so we will leave it as it is. Once all of this is done, click Mount. Veracrypt will ask you for your password, so type it into the box and press OK. Veracrypt will now mount the encrypted volume as a drive, which allows you to access its contents in decrypted form. You can get to the mounted volume by opening Windows Explorer and navigating to the This PC screen. You will see a list of attached drives. There should now be a new drive mounted on the drive letter that you just chose in Veracrypt. In this case, A. If you double-click it, you should be able to access it just like a normal drive. Another way of accessing the drive is simply to double-click on the drive location in the Veracrypt window. This will go straight to the drive itself. You can now save files into this drive, or copy and paste them as you wish. We are going to drag a file into it. Once you are finished working with the drive, you can then dismount it. You do this by making sure it is selected in the drive list at the top pane, and then clicking Dismount in the bottom pane. The drive should disappear, and all that should remain is the encrypted volume on your desktop. The files in there are now inaccessible to anyone without the password. Whenever you want to access the files in it again, just follow the same mount procedure. The second thing we will show you how to do is to use Veracrypt to encrypt an external drive. This can be an external hard drive or a USB flash drive, or even a memory card. You might use this option if you have two computers with Veracrypt installed, and want to carry files between them, but don't want to carry sensitive files around unencrypted. Click on the Create Volume button again. This time, select the middle option, Encrypt a non-system partition or drive, and click Next. You may be asked for a user account control now. If so, click Yes. Again, we will ignore the hidden volume option and click Next. For volume location, we will select the drive we want to encrypt. 
Click Select Device. You will be given a list of the drives attached to the computer. Take care to choose the correct drive to encrypt, or you could end up inadvertently erasing a drive you don't want to erase. In this case, we are going to encrypt the E drive, which is called Sensitive Files, in this window. We click on it and then click OK. Once it's done, click Next. Now, the Volume Creation Mode screen. The top option erases the whole disk and encrypts it, so that all files are lost. The second option encrypts the drive without erasing files on it, so that all files that were previously on the drive, unencrypted, end up inside the encrypted drive. We're going to choose the top option, so the entire disk will be erased. Click Next. On this screen we will again choose the default options, AES with the SHA-512 hash algorithm. Click Next. On the Volume Size screen, since we're encrypting a disk, you cannot choose the size because the size is just the capacity of the drive, so click Next. Choose your password. Again, make sure that you can remember your password, but also that it is long enough and obscure enough that it is secure. When you're finished, click Next. Again, move your mouse around to build up the computer's store of randomness so that it can encrypt the drive. When the bar is full, click Format. You will be given a warning that all files on the drive will be completely erased. If you're happy to proceed, click Yes. When the drive is finished being encrypted, you'll be given a note informing you that to mount the drive you need to choose a different letter. Click OK. And then click OK here and close the wizard. Now, to mount the newly encrypted drive, click on the Select Device option. A list of drives will pop up. We have just encrypted the E drive, so click it and press OK. Now we will choose a drive letter that it will be mounted on, so we can access it. We will choose B. And now click Mount. Type in your password and then press OK. And the drive should mount on B. If we open the Windows Explorer, we can now see a new drive, B. We can access it by double-clicking it. Also, we can access it from the Veracrypt window by double-clicking on its entry in the drive list. Again, let's drag a file into our new encrypted drive just to demonstrate that it can be used just like a normal drive. And once we're finished using it, we can dismount the drive by selecting B in the drive list on the Veracrypt window and then selecting Dismount in the bottom pane. The third and last task we'll show you in Veracrypt is how to encrypt your system disk. That's the internal hard disk or solid state drive that Windows is installed on. It's worth pointing out that if something goes wrong with this procedure, you could lose all of the data on your hard drive. So if there's anything that you don't want to lose, make sure to back it up to an already encrypted drive before you start this procedure. Click on the Create Volume button. This time, choose the third option. Encrypt the system partition or entire system drive, and then click Next. Veracrypt again offers you the option of a hidden drive, but this time it is a little bit different, and a lot more complicated. A hidden encrypted system drive basically entails an entire hidden operating system on your system drive, with a decoy operating system, each with different passwords, so that you can easily hand over the decoy password if you're under duress. Anyone who gets the decoy password could only boot into the decoy operating system, and would not even know the secret operating system existed. This is a complicated thing to set up, so we are not going to do it in this tutorial, but if you're interested, again, read the manual. We will choose the default first option, Normal, and press Next. Veracrypt now offers you the option whether to encrypt just the system partition or the whole drive. We recommend encrypting the whole drive, so choose the second option, and press Next. You will be asked for user account control. Agree. Now a screen will ask you whether you want to encrypt the host protected area. This is a special section of the drive that modern operating systems have. On some systems, encrypting the host protected area can cause issues, as Veracrypt explains. We recommend reading the notes on the screen and making sure that none of the warnings apply to you. We're going to choose Yes and click Next. You will again be asked for user account control, so say Yes. A box will pop up as Veracrypt checks whether it can encrypt the whole system drive. 
and then it will progress to the next screen. Veracrypt will now ask you to choose whether you are on a single boot or a multi-boot system. This is to cater for if you have an unusual setup on your computer, where you have both Windows and, perhaps, a Linux operating system installed at the same time. You would probably know if you have a multi-boot system. When you turn the computer on, it would ask you whether you wanted to boot into Windows or the other operating system. Most retail Windows computers will not be dual or multi-boot, so you should probably choose the single boot option. That is what we will choose in this tutorial. And then press Next. On this screen, again, we will choose the default options, AES with SHA-256 hash algorithm. And then press Next. And on this screen, choose and input your password twice. Make sure it is memorable, long and secure. And then click Next. On this screen, again, help your computer build up enough randomness to encrypt the drive properly by moving your mouse around the window, and then when the green bar is full, click Next. On this screen, Veracrypt will offer you the option to go back and regenerate the encryption keys, in case you have any problems with the ones that have just been generated. We don't need to do that, so we click Next. Now the Rescue Disk screen. After Veracrypt has fully encrypted your system disk, it installs a tiny unencrypted section at the start of the disk, called the boot loader. This is what loads when you turn your computer on, and then asks you for your password. When you input your password correctly, the boot loader then unlocks the rest of the disk, and the system can boot up. The rescue disk is a provision for if the boot loader ever gets damaged or corrupted which would mean that you would be unable to unlock the disk and boot up, and everything within the encrypted system drive would be unrecoverable. The rescue disk contains a copy of the bootloader. You burn the rescue disk to a CD or to a USB, and then if something ever happens to your bootloader, you can boot from the USB or CD instead, and then repair your bootloader. Veracrypt won't let you proceed without creating a rescue disk. In this case, we are going to save the Veracrypt ISO file, or image file, which we can then burn to CD or DVD. Click on Browse and choose to save the rescue disk to the desktop. Type in a name for it, Veracrypt Rescue Disk.ISO. Then click Save, then click Next. You will then get this pop-up. If you have a DVD burner connected to your computer, along with blank DVDs, Go ahead and choose the option to burn the DVD and create the rescue disk. If you do not have a DVD burner connected to your computer, you can choose the appropriate option here and save the ISO to the desktop. Veracrypt then recommends that you copy the ISO file to a removable drive so that it is not on the same system drive that you're about to encrypt. This is good advice and we recommend that you follow these instructions if you don't have a DVD burner. Click OK. Veracrypt will then give you a message about using the rescue disk if you make changes to the bootloader. Read it carefully and then click OK. Just to demonstrate, we will now connect a DVD burner to the computer, place a blank DVD in it, and burn the recovery disk to a DVD. Right-click on the recovery disk ISO and choose Burn Disk Image. A window should pop up. Choose the DVD burner in the drop-down menu if it has not already been selected, and then click Burn. Wait while the disk is burned, and then click Close. Remove the DVD from the drive and store it in a safe place. And now we can proceed with the Veracrypt wizard. On the next screen of the Veracrypt wizard, you are asked to choose a wipe mode. Veracrypt is about to encrypt your system drive bit by bit, and convert all of your existing data into encrypted form. You will not lose any files. But while it is doing that, as explained in the on-screen notes, Veracrypt offers you the option of overriding the unencrypted form of your file several times, so that someone who performs forensic analysis on the encrypted drive would not be able to find any traces of the unencrypted data that was once on it. It's a good idea to choose a secure wipe mode, but be aware that this will take more time. Click on the menu. You will see an array of options based on how many passes you want how many times Veracrypt will override the original data. The more passes, the more time it will take. We will choose three passes, which is a US Department of Defense standard for secure erasure. Once you've made your choice, click Next. You will be given a pop-up warning that this will take more time. 
If you're happy to proceed, click Yes. You are now at the last stages of the process. Veracrypt now wants to carry out a pre-test to see if it's all going to work before it goes ahead and begins encrypting your drive. To do this, it will need to restart the computer. If you're happy to proceed with the test, click Test. You will now be given some text to read, which describes what is about to happen in detail and gives you instructions for what to do if anything goes wrong. We recommend you read it in full and then click OK. Veracrypt will now tell you, your computer must be restarted, do you want to restart it now? Click Yes. The computer will now shut down and restart. If all goes according to plan, you will then see this screen, which is the Veracrypt bootloader. You will be asked for the password you entered. Type it in now and press Enter. It may also ask you for a PIM. The options we are using in our tutorial do not include PIM, so ignore this and press Enter. The Veracrypt bootloader will now verify your password, which will take about 10 seconds. And then, if you entered the password correctly, Windows will start to boot. Login is normal. And once you've booted up, the Veracrypt window should appear, telling you that the pretest has been successful and offering you the option to commence the encryption of your system drive. Read the warning in full, and if you are happy to proceed, click Encrypt. Again, you will be given a lot of text to read, describing the next step and what to do if it goes wrong. We recommend that you read through this carefully, and when you are happy to proceed, click OK. You will be asked for user account control, click Yes, and the encryption process will commence. This will likely take a long time, because Veracrypt has to process the entire drive in order to fully encrypt the disk. But with Veracrypt, you don't have to just sit watching it. You can minimize the screen and go about your business, while Veracrypt encrypts the drive bit by bit in the background. You can also, if you wish, click on the Defer button in the lower right-hand corner of the window. This pauses the encryption so that you could even shut your computer down and boot it up at a later time to resume and finish the encryption. In this tutorial, we're just going to leave it running and use a time lapse so that we can go to the next step. Once the encryption is complete, you will get a screen notifying you that the drive has been successfully encrypted. Click OK, and then click Finish. Now, if you launch Veracrypt again, you will see the system drive in the drive list at the top, telling you that the system drive has been fully encrypted. You should also know that if you should ever wish to decrypt the drive again, so that it is back to normal, you can find an option to do that in the System menu, called Permanently Decrypt System Drive. We won't carry you through that process now, but if you decide to use it, Veracrypt will guide you through the necessary steps, which are quite like the ones we have just taken, but in reverse. For now, we will shut down the computer to demonstrate what the boot process is like now that Veracrypt is installed. Once you start the computer up again, you will be shown the Veracrypt bootloader screen, like this. Type in the password and press Enter. Without that password, nobody can access any of the files on your system disk. Once you enter the password, the encrypted disk is opened, and Windows, which is fully locked within the encrypted disk along with all your files, will then start to boot. And once the computer is booted, you can start using Windows as normal. Enjoy your full disk encrypted Windows system. That's the end of this tutorial on Veracrypt. Of course, Veracrypt doesn't end there. There are loads more options, and if you want to learn more about them, you should start by reading the manual. If you haven't already, we recommend you watch our overview video, Protecting Your Data. We also have tutorials showing you how to securely erase data on a Windows computer using two different secure erasure applications, Bleachbit and Eraser. Neither of these tools allow you to securely erase your system disk. To find out how to do that, watch our tutorial Erasing your Windows computer with DBAN. To watch any of these videos, click or tap on the pop up message and select them from the menu. Thanks for watching InfoSec Bytes. If you found this video useful, please share it widely with your colleagues and co workers. To support the Centre for Investigative Journalism with a donation, please visit tcij.org forward slash donate. And if you would like to watch our other videos, please go to infosecbytes.org or subscribe to our channel below.